It was the early 1980s, before I ever started working in the world of IT. And I was in a training session with Tom Hopkins in Scottsdale, Arizona. And that's where I first heard the concept of SPR. And what it boils down to this is three letters that stand for stimulus, pause, and response. Whenever there's a stimulus, there's a pause of some length, and then there's a response. And one of the truths that I learned early on was that the fact that if we are better prepared up front, then when we do have a stimulus, we can have a very short pause and a better response compared to just showing up and saying, okay, what do we do now? And luck favors those who are prepared more than those who aren't. And regarding cybersecurity and analysis of cyber attacks, one thing we can be prepared for is the various classifications that we're going to have regarding threats. For example, imagine that you and I are both called up because a user opened up an email attachment and even though the user had a current antivirus software on their system, there was no warnings in place, it didn't stop the executable from running, and as a result the computer became slow and unresponsive, and even worse, they didn't even tell us about it for several weeks. So we go over to their machine and let's say we use Netstat that allows us to see the open ports and running services associated with those ports and also the current connections that are on that computer. And upon further investigation, we discover that there's a connection to a known malicious foreign state or a high risk country who are notorious for malicious activity. So right off the bat, it's like we have some type of a zero day type of an attack. Uh, the malware or malicious software that executed didn't get identified by our antivirus software because perhaps it's polymorphic malware that has been refactored and now looks different than the signatures are looking for in the antivirus software. So in the case of threats, we have known threats that things like antivirus and intrusion detection systems can pick up on. And then we have unknown threats like a zero day attack, which has not yet been identified. So the actual software could be an example of an unknown threat and at the same time, if Netstat shows us that it has connections to a high-risk country who are notorious for things like advanced persistent threats, based on the connection of where it's going to, that could be an example of a known threat, that connection, that permanent connection that's been established from that system over to that malicious country. And as a result of identifying that, we might take it a step further. If we have a security incident and event management system, we could collect log information from computers and switches and routers and firewalls and intrusion detection or prevention devices or web application firewalls or anything else that's feeding into our SIM. And we could create some advanced queries and plug in that destination of that country or that state where that connection was going to in the attempt to correlate or find additional traffic or additional systems that are going to that location. And there's an acronym of TTP, which stands for Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures. And in warfare, whether it's physical or in cyber warfare, by better understanding the tactics and techniques and procedures that are being used by the adversary, we can look for those telltale signs and then hopefully prevent them from causing too much damage. So if we have malware that's ransomware, that's encrypting the data on our systems and holding it for ransom, that's going to look very much the same on all systems that it affects. Or if we have an advanced persistent threat over a long period of time and it's leaking or stealing data out of the system, once we identify some malicious activity from an advanced persistent threat that's in our system, and we better understand its tactics, techniques, and procedures, we can continue to look for it in our systems. And if an attacker is trying to steal or gather specific information in an industry, whether it's private health information, or personally identifiable information, or credit card information, and it's happening across multiple organizations at multiple different locations, however, the attacks are unique, they're not always the same, that's really tricky because we don't have some consistent element that we can look for. And one way of an organization pulling that off is to have a boatload of insiders who are exfiltrating or stealing that data or leaking out that data at various different companies. And insiders don't have to be from the country of origin. They can be compromised individuals. They can be either disgruntled with their company or they're seeking financial gain or the attackers have some information they can use as blackmail if the insider doesn't cooperate with their desires. And because threats can come from the inside or outside the company, that's why it's a great idea internally in the company to do the rule of least privilege, not giving users more access than they need to do their jobs, and also having isolation and separation regarding the network traffic for data and the network traffic for managing the infrastructure devices like the routers and switches and firewalls and servers. And that way, if we do have an insider who's attempting to log on to our infrastructure devices to compromise them, because the management network is on a separate logical network, it'll be more difficult for that attacker, even on the inside, to get to those infrastructure devices. And as a result of planning ahead for various types of compromises or attacks coming in, we may have a labeling system that's gonna help us in prioritizing those things that we need to do first. 
and those could include labels such as critical or urgent, and then down to important or normal, or at the low end, even informational. And that way we can focus our attention on those elements and those threats that deserve our attention because they have the potential to cause us the greatest loss or the greatest risk to our company, to the business, and to the data we hold. In this nugget, we've identified that if we take a little time up front to prepare for some classifications and labels regarding threats, it'll assist us in prioritizing and responding more appropriately when those threats occur. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.